In our wonderful day in the Lord broadcast this week, we're still looking at worship, but we're going to turn to the issue of music. I, uh, on the one hand, uh, most people today, I think, think of uh, when they think of worship, you know, especially in a public worship setting, at a church in particular, they're thinking of music. So they will often say something like, "Well, let's worship," and what they mean by that is is music, or they might even call the portion of a worship service. Uh, the, the music portion, they call that worship, where the other things such as praying or the Lord's Supper or, or preaching of the Word is uh, called something else, is not considered worship. Uh, uh, we're trying to show those are mistakes. Uh, all aspects of, of that kind of a worship service is worship. We've looked at different pieces of that, including praying. And we've looked at the, the life of prayer and the God of uh, uh, the life of prayer that's part of worship. Uh, we've, we looked at the, the worship in, in our own personal lives. So worship covers many things, but music is part of that. And, and yet it's took a predominant part in our present culture to such a degree that it's hard to distinguish uh, music from worship itself. Mer worship then, let's, let's say it very clearly, worship is made up of different components. One of those components is music, singing, instruments, and so forth. It's an important component. It has value. We're going to look at that in Scripture, uh, but it's not everything, but it is a piece. And so if we're going to worship the Lord in music, we need to know exactly how God wants us to worship Him when it comes to music and, and apply those principles to our musical uh, services and into our own lives as well. So as we think about that, we, we go back into the Old Testament a little bit, and we find that the many have, set, have called the Psalms the hymn book of the Old Testament. Others have called it the prayer book of the Old Testament because there, there is this overlap between prayer and music in the Psalms. We, we find the psalmists pouring their hearts out to God in prayers of different kind, but we also find that these uh, Psalms are very singable. And although we don't know exactly how they sang back in those days, uh, they're written in a poetic form that could be singable, and we trust m many of them, if not all of them, uh, were sung by the Jewish people in the Old Testament. So that was that's that much we know. But we also know that in the former days, the early days of the Jewish worship system, starting with Moses, that, uh, that music really wasn't a major part of the coming together of God's people to worship God. The, everything seemed to center around the sacrificial system and the atonement that was found there that would point to the atonement of Christ for our sins. And so the people would come together, not to sing, uh, sometimes to be taught, but primarily to witness the sacrifices of the animals that would pay for temporarily for the sins of the people and point to Christ who would permanently remove those, those, uh, that judgment upon people. It wasn't until David became king, and David, remember, was a musician himself, that the, the aspect of music became a major part of the worship of God's people. David, in, the, in First Chronicles, introduced uh, the uh, singing of, uh, uh, in the temple. Some of the priests and Levites were set aside as choir members, as musicians, as, as singers, to lead the people in music. So David set this up uh, under the approval of God, so that the people would come together to now not only sacrifice and, and hear the teaching of God's word, but also to sing to the glory of God. So that was much of what was going on at that time. And so then we move into the New Testament. It's interesting as, uh, as we think about worship that there's very little said in, in the four Gospels about singing as part of worship. We have a, a song or two that, that shows up. The disciples, when they went out into the night following the Lord's Supper, sang a hymn. And so that would no doubt was one of the of the Psalms. And we could get into that if we wanted to, but no doubt that's what was happening. But we have very, very few uh, mentions of that, especially in the, in the aspect of worship. We come into the book of Acts, same thing. We find the church gathering together to pray, to, to be taught the apostles' teachings, uh, to, uh, to fellowship, to take, all, take the Lord's Supper, but we don't hear anything about them coming together to sing. And I think that's instructive to us. That's something that we should recognize at this point. 
that while music, as we're going to see, has a place in the worship of God, it does not have the central place in the worship of God. When, if we make our worship services all about music, I think we distort worship and we misuse the music God has given us. So what is the New Testament purpose for music? Well, join us tomorrow and we will begin to look at that.